Hi, I'm here with Paul Westerberg. Come join us in The Hang. It's definitely a dark record. I mean, it's the only record I could have possibly made at that time. It lasted a long time, too. I mean, the dark mood. Uh, the best I can say is that uh, it's better for me to write about sort of despair and darkness than to be incapable of, of getting off the sofa, you know? And it's like better to write about suicide than to contemplate it too heavily. I think of the replacements only when they're brought up to me, you know? It's like I, I, for two years I'm at home and I, they don't really cross my mind. I still hear them on the radio. Uh, I'm not ashamed of anything we did. And, you know, Warner's put out a, a compilation of some of our uh, outtakes, and I did a little bit of remixing on it. I was surprised at uh, how meaty some of it, uh, the me and Tommy and Chris stuff in Memphis was. And I also cringed at some of the lyrics, but, uh, well, you know, we were okay. Music business, very, very bad to me. Um, it's not a fair business, you know. I mean, you can go through the the history of of rock and roll. I mean, it's not true. I was going to say that 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 some the pioneers tend to get the shaft and the imitators get the the gold. But maybe it is true, you know. Maybe uh, you, know, you know. I guess Elvis was a pioneer, but you know, Big Mama Thornton and, and all that stuff. Uh, I'm not. Uh, dissatisfied with my place in it. I mean, I wouldn't trade my status for, you know, John Resnick's pop culture notoriety right now, you know. It's fleeting. Uh, I think a few of the tours that the, the Mats did with, uh, with Tom Petty and uh, you know, playing uh, Madison Square Garden and, and being in front of a large audience and uh, and not receiving the applause and, you know, trying to goad them into booing us made me rethink the whole aspect of what the heck am I doing here in the first place. It's like to have a bunch of people clap is not my goal. So uh, it took me a few years to realize that I think I am an artist more than a want to be rock and roll star. Um, yeah, you know, it's fun, but the fun, the fun is where it, it, it always was. I mean, it's still fun. I'll strap on my Les Paul in the basement, you know, and turn on the Marshall amp, and I'm still 15. I still enjoy that as much as I ever did. It's just a question of, do I want to put this on a record and then go on a tour and pretend I'm 15. It's like, ah, I guess I can't quite do that. So I guess performing live is, is less fun than it was at one time. But uh, I, I'm coming up with ideas that, that are slightly eclectic, I still get a kick out of. There was a guy when we were uh, early out starting in the dressing room of a small club in Minneapolis, and he he came down and said, no matter whatever happens, don't forget that there's there's not a club owner or a, a, a record label or a cop or anyone in the world that can tell you what to do because you play rock and roll. And it's like, I was stupid enough to believe it, you know? And I think I still do. <laughs> <laughs>